I like Rawls and Yellow's story. I go into it more in the book, but I'll just tell you quickly. She was a poor Jewish girl from New York, graduated from Hunter. She was tops in her class in physics, and she said, this is what I want to do. I love science. She didn't know she was going to get a Nobel at the time. She just wanted to learn. And her teachers said, Rosalind, this is the 1940s, or maybe they didn't say that, but they did say this. Don't you think it would be more appropriate to become a secretary to a scientist? So she had no choice. It was 1940s. So she got a job for a scientist at here at Columbia University because she wanted to take science courses here at Columbia. And her boss said, don't you think stenography would make more sense? So she eventually did get, a, and she did get into graduate school. She got a PhD. Um, her kids have said to me, my mom has no sense of humor. I think from what I've read about her, she had a little sense of humor because she did say they had to have a world war just so I could get a PhD. So she did get into, she, Purdue University called Hunter and said, we have two spots. It's World War II. We can't fill up these programs. Um, she's Jewish. She's a woman. Will you guarantee that you'll give her a job back at Hunter? Because that's where she went to college after her PhD, and Hunter said, we can't guarantee, so he rescinded that. Um, then University of Illinois did accept her in reluctantly. She got a PhD, um, met her husband, another a New York City guy. She met him out there at University of Illinois. She got her PhD a year before him. He got his job offer first figure that out. Um, she eventually got a job in the Bronx in the VA and in this tiny little lab, which according to lore, I'm not sure it's true, but I still like the story, um, they gave her a janitor's closet for a lab. But in that lab, she and Solomon Burson figured out this technique, which I think I describe well in the book, but I'm not getting into science here. A scientist will note as radioimmunoassay and we still base things on that. But she figured out how to measure hormones. She published the data sent it in, it was rejected across the board because basically editors who are just human, flawed human beings were like, no, you can't measure hormones, it's impossible. She was livid, she's like, look at the data, we figured out how to measure hormones because hormones are so sparse in the body, it's like measuring like a teardrop in the ocean. Eventually she got the piece published. Then um, people, she knew the right, she knew this was huge. She knew this could be used to measure drug doses, all things, not just hormones. She knew she was revolutionizing 20th century medicine. Um, and someone said, you got to get a patent right away. And she said, absolutely not. Like, this is so revolutionary. Everyone should be able to do this. So she didn't make a penny on this. Um, and all of a sudden, people were flocking to the VA to learn this technique. And it really did. It, it changed dramatically, not just endocrinology. We wouldn't have the fertility business. We wouldn't be able to detect, like, HIV in blood. We wouldn't be able to do drug dosing. So I think she took a leap of faith in doing this. And she not only took a leap, but she had to, like, push people in her way in order to get this done. And in her very last talk, which was to a group of public school students in third grade in New York City, she said to them, stick to the data, stick to the facts, and when you know you're right, save all your rejection letters because you can use them as part of your exhibit when you get the Nobel Prize. <laughs> and she did. <laughs>